Do you want it? Heck yeah, I do. Let's flip a desk. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Katie. I am the owner and artist behind Salvaged by K. Scott. I have been running my very own furniture flipping business right here out of my home for the past four years. And now I'm sharing my knowledge and experiences here with you guys on YouTube. For lots more furniture flipping tips, tricks, and design inspiration, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and hit the bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. While I wait for the heater out here in the garage to do its thing and warm things up to a decent temperature to work in, I'm going to clean up my mess from the last flip and give you guys a quick tour of this desk that my husband found out at the curb on his way home from work. This piece is in really awesome condition, which is not typical for stuff that I find at the side of the road. It's got a few minor scratches on the top. That's nothing I can't easily deal with, but it is missing some hardware. So I ordered some new poles off of Amazon. This desk is built of solid maple and the best way that I know to determine if something is solid wood or has a veneer on it is to take a look at the back of the piece. You can usually see quite clearly if it is one solid piece of wood or if it had a veneer, you'd be able to see a distinctive thin layer on the top. Because I work exclusively with secondhand furniture, I like to start off by always cleaning my furniture really well. I use TSP or trisodium phosphate, which is a heavy duty cleaner and degreaser to clean everything inside and out. Once the top of the desk was dry, I broke out my surf prep three x four electric ray sander with some 80 grit sandpaper to start sanding off this old finish. I carried my sanding down over the edge a little bit because the design that I have in mind for this piece is a really light monochromatic bleached wood top with a neutral painted bottom paint dipped effect. To get the finish off of these contoured edges, I added one of Surf Prep's foam sanding pads, which will conform to the curves and keep me from accidentally sanding these details flat. Once I was done getting that finish off, I switched to a 120 grit sandpaper to start smoothing out the wood. Now to lighten this wood even further and remove a lot of that yellow undertone, I'm going to bleach it. I am using plain old regular Clorox household bleach in a spray bottle for this. You can purchase wood bleaching kits that are a lot stronger and will lighten the wood in fewer applications, but none of the hardware stores near me have any in stock, so this is going to have to do the trick. I sprayed all of my sanded wood surfaces with a liberal amount of bleach and left it in the garage to do its thing. Obviously, this is a fumey process, so make sure that you have really good ventilation if you want to try this for yourself. Once the wood had dried, I came back to assess the color difference. It was definitely lighter, but still a little more yellow than I wanted. So I applied two more coats of bleach. After the third layer of bleach had dried, I was really happy with the color. So I decided to clean off all of the extra bleach so I could move on to the next step. You want to be sure to really clean the bleach off of any areas that you're going to be painting because it will affect the finish. 
To help me counteract any further yellow or orange undertone in the wood, I decided to apply a really light paint wash of some super watered down leftover white chalk paint over all of my sanded areas. And once this was dry, the color of the wood was perfect. You can really see the difference between the paint wash and just the plain bleached wood right here with the two drawers side by side. With all of that bleach and water, it is very common for wood fibers to plump up. This is also called raised grain. So I went over all of those areas with a super fine sandpaper just to knock that texture down. I grabbed some of my favorite frog tape to start masking off my newly finished top so that I could get started on the painted bottom of this desk. This frog tape has an edge lock technology that I have found to be the best for preventing any paint or anything from bleeding up through that masking line. This is the tape that I prefer when I'm looking for a really crisp, clean line. I also wrapped the two bottom drawers that I'm going to be painting with some of this Scotch painter's tape and plastic in one so that I am protecting the drawer sides and interiors from any paint overspray. After I had everything masked off, I realized that I never scuff sanded the bottom portion of the dresser that I'm going to be painting. This is so important to get a good bond between your paint and your substrate. So I gave that all a really quick sand with some 220 grit sandpaper, blew off the sanding dust with some compressed air, and then gave the bottom two quick coats of clear spray shellac. This is going to act as a primer and block any stains from wood tannins from coming through my new paint. Speaking of paint, I am going to be using some Seco latex paint and mixing it with BB Froche paint transformer powder to turn it into the chalk paint that I love to use on my furniture. To turn straight up latex wall paint into chalk paint with this awesome powder, I added two heaping tablespoons of the powder to one and a half tablespoons of water and then poured in one cup of my paint. Once I had all of that mixed really thoroughly, I went ahead and added a little bit more water because I am going to be spraying this finish and it was a little too thick for my gun. As soon as I got the consistency that I wanted, I strained the paint into my HVLP pneumatic spray gun. I'll leave a card here to a video that I've created all about my spraying setup and how I spray chalk style paints on furniture if you're interested in checking that out. Now it is time to start spraying my finish. I think I forgot to mention before, but this color is called Coconut Oil by Seco. It's a really beautiful pink undertoned beige color, or maybe a beige undertoned pink color. It's a really beautiful neutral, whatever color it is. Now, I know this is going to be a bone of contention for some people who are really against painted hardware, but I did go ahead and paint the new French Provincial style handles for these bottom two drawers because the design that I'm creating here is one that is paint dipped. I want the desk to look like it was dunked in a bucket of paint and pulled straight up. So these handles need to be the same color as the drawers. I 
I ended up applying a total of three light coats of this paint to get the solid coverage that I was looking for. And once my last coat was good and dry, I removed all of the masking so that I could take a look at my creation and get ready to start sealing it up. To protect the new finish on this desk, I decided to try out this Verithane Soft Touch Matte Finish Top Coat for the first time. I followed the directions on the can and sprayed two coats, waiting two hours and giving a light sand with a 400 grit sandpaper between each coat. Now, the drawer bottoms on this desk are not looking so hot. They are white MDF and I can't sand them clean like I normally would. So I decided for this one that I was actually going to use some of my leftover chalk paint mix. I brushed on two coats of paint and let it dry for a couple of hours. And then I came back and cleaned up any messy lines with a gold Sharpie around the edges. Then all that was left to do was put everything back together. And this is what it looks like now. Say something meaningful, say something I don't know, I want to know you better, the way that you talk to me, the way that you make me feel, I don't know if you're real, I want to put you in that spotlight, looking at you all night, put you in that spotlight. I think this contemporary new design is so sophisticated and it is going to sell fast. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you leave me a thumbs up, a comment down below, and please make sure that you are subscribed and I will catch you guys next time. Touch